What's up, everybody? Welcome to The Building Code. This is a big day for our audience here, which is a little unusual here at IBS, the International Builder Show, for those of you listening and don't know what that is in construction. That'd be weird. Charlie Burt Whistle here is my uh, you know, esteemed co-host. And if you're a longtime listener, you know that we don't let him out of the building at Builder Trend. <laughs> And we finally got him on site. Charlie Burtwistle, how are you doing in Vegas? I'm doing fantastic. You my look first, great. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I hit the, uh, the desert for a run this morning, got my tan. Uh, no, first time at IBS. Very, very exciting. We got some laughs in the crowd already, so this is electric. Let's just, that was generous. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it's fantastic I'm here, but more importantly, we have Steven Sanders Myers here. Steven, welcome to the Building Code. Thank you. Yeah, Thanks thank you for joining for us live in front of the, That's right, the live studio audience here at International Builders. Have you ever done a podcast before? I have not. First one. Yeah? Yeah. Brave. Yeah, I'm, on the, I'm, I'm listening out, to quite a few, but I here love we go. It. I love it. And you, you've you listened to The Building Co. We confirmed. I, I have, yes. Yeah. Very much a fan. You want to give us a live review in front of our audience here? Sure, <laughs> uh, maybe, sure. maybe, 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 maybe. Uh, <laughs> maybe we don't no, do this I, right I'll now. Give it, I'll give it thumbs up. It's Yeah, it's you know, 30 minutes, impactful. It's great feedback. I mean, some of the best things in the industry is just collaboration and hearing from other builders. So getting that data is great. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about you, Stephen. Obviously, you're a builder. You're here to talk about your experience in the industry. Why don't you give us a little rundown of kind of your backstory? Sure. So graduated college, a uh, degree in, in uh, biblical studies, didn't go out with the career path I initially thought with that. I was waiting tables and uh, introduced myself to a, a table that sat down and shook his hand. He you know, put his hand out, shook my hand and said, that's a great handshake. Do you want a job? <laughs> it's like, yeah. So shortly after, I'm framing houses. So that's a and real story. You, that, you were that waiting is how tables, I got in. I was a firm tables. handshake, yep. and he let, that led to a job. Let's start. Let's go. That's so amazing. I'm, I'm on a construction crew, framing houses, siding, roofing, just learning all of it. And I dove in and absolutely fell in love with it. So I, I did that for a year and then got a job in construction management. And then I've just continued to grow the career and learn. And I, over the you know through the recession and different things, I, I've continued to learn project management, remodeling, just having to be nimble and pivot as the market goes. And then six years ago, started with Brightwater Homes. You, I've heard a lot of backstories of our, our customers. You might be the first one that had a biblical studies background. That That's ended it. Up. That's but it. We need to start keeping track. We, yeah. Like of all the backstory of our customers. And I get why we were talking beforehand. I said I wanted to learn something about you, but not too much about you and That's waste right. the content. That's right. I'm glad you held on to that story <laughs> until we were recording because uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, so now you mentioned you're at Brightwater Homes now. Uh, tell us a little bit about the company. You said you've been there seven? So yeah, six years. Six going years. Year, seventh year now. So it's a 12-year-old company uh, founded by Charlie Bostwick. And uh, it's we're committed to architectural and design and sustainable building. So it's something that we've continued to grow our, our brand and rapport in the market by just by, by being a leader in, in what we do, by following through on, on what we believe in. Uh, we build in Atlanta and North and South Metro Atlanta. We build in Charleston and Bluffton, South Carolina. And what type of construction are you doing? So single family, uh, mostly detached. We do a couple of townhomes. Um, and because we have in-house design and architecture, we can vary our product a good bit. But I would say average home is around 3,200 square foot. Move up homes, maybe 1.3 million average. Um, but we have the flexibility and have done larger homes and smaller homes. We've done over 5,000 square foot and we've done 1,200 square foot. How many projects a year are you uh, running then? 40 to 50. 40 to 50? Yeah. Wow. And now you were telling us earlier, um, I think Zach ran off to go do something important. Uh, well, throughout the booth, I actually but contribute to the IBS show. Zach like, has real you know, jobs. We flew this guy out to... Yeah, this is my half an hour of time. This is why they <laughs> we're shipping them right so back to Omaha. The most of it. But you were telling me that you made a commitment, or Brightwater Homes did, to be fully net zero building by 2025, right? That's right. That's Could right. you talk to us a little bit about kind of what drove that decision and and what you're doing on your roadmap to get there? Sure, sure. So we, we have a passion for sustainability. So what what drives our company? Um, we believe very much in the outdoors. So if have you heard of what a cairn is? No. Uh, so. Cairns is a stack of stones that kind of is a trail marker and show you along your way. Oh, so yeah. that, that is our kind of our, our it's our cairn that drives it. So yeah. it's C-A-I-R-N-S, so collaboration, architecture, design, uh, impact, respect, nurture, and sustainability. So sustainability is one of our founding principles. And about, let's see, five years ago, we committed to start putting solar panels on the homes. Not all of them, but we, we believe in it. And so we want to lead by example. So we start doing that. And the, the conversation had not always been there. Let's, we want to go net zero. 
And then uh, beginning of uh, last year, 2022, our, our, our owner, uh, Charlie, came and said, we're doing this. We're all in. Net zero energy, let's do it. So we've, we've got a 10 home development that's all going to be net zero energy this year. And then each development after that will roll into it. So we'll be 100%. We'll hit it before 25. There's a ton of builders that we've interviewed on the podcast. This is a trend of the construction industry that is just booming. I mean, you're here at the International Builder Show. Is this where you do a lot of kind of your exploration and these material vendors that are kind of getting into more of this uh, emission-free building? It, it's a great place for it. Yeah. I mean, there's so much innovation here of, of seeing new products, seeing new, uh, just everything that's coming out. I mean, I try to keep a pretty good pulse on what is out there, but coming here, it's like, man, I've, yeah, I've scoured the internet, and I didn't see it, and now I see it here. So I'm, I'm excited to see what's coming up. So for the, the people out in the crowd or the people sitting at the table right here that this is their first ever IBS, uh, you were telling me a little bit about the schedule that you have kind of written out. What were some, uh, some stops you have to hit or what's kind of your plan uh, for the remainder of the next kind of three days here? Sure. So if, if you haven't made a plan, stop right now, get the app out, make a plan, get <laughs> intentional with it. Otherwise, your head will be spinning and you'll miss what you want to do. Um, I've got a couple of educational sessions each of the, the three days. Uh, and then I've got some dedicated boot time. So um, we've got, I'm with CBUSA, so I want to see a couple of our national vendors. Uh, I want to talk to um, uh, just a couple of new ones that I keep tabs on for you know, some of the new products coming out around sustainability. And then allow myself some free time, but in, you know, intentional like hour and a half of free time just to, to see what I come across. Like if you see a random podcast being recorded, you can, that's you can right. come yeah. in and sit down that, and listen that's for right. a bit. Would, if we see you on definitely. another podcast, we're going to be part <laughs> of right. betrayed. That's right. That's Can't right. let that happen. It will, well, it will not happen. <laughs> yeah, great, great. Well, we'll hold you to that. Today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, it's obviously, you know, you're a Builder Trend customer. You've used us for, you know, since, since you started at yep. Brightwater. Yes. Um, I'm really interested about, you know, how you have used that system to, to leverage, you know, your operational efficiencies. You know, what, what are the things about Builder Trend that kind of improve your business and what have you, you know, what are you hoping to kind of continue to grow into over the next, you know, year, two years, five years? Sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. So we've been building trend about eight years. Uh, when I started with the company, it was basically just for the scheduling aspect. Um, Very common. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So since then, we've kind of grown with Builder Trend of, of rolling out and utilizing new features with it. So now we're, we're you know, fully built out selections, um, daily logs, 100% purchase orders, uh, warranty, uh, we're about to roll out the buyer portal, so just a, a, a bunch of the different pieces with it. And as far as how it helps us, I, I'm, I'm a huge advocate and believer in process. You've got to have a process, and then executing it is, helps out. And so you can have a great process using Excel or something like that, but your efficiency is going to hit a ceiling. And so BuilderTrain allows us to really maximize the efficiency in our different processes through through purchase orders, through communication, through daily logs, uh, tracking our, the flow of our projects and uh, just keeping everything more accountable as, as a group, a collaborative approach. So you mentioned, uh, you know, you so you run the purchasing uh, department of Brightwater, right? And, and you mentioned the purchase orders in BT a lot. You're also a member of CBUSA, right? That's right. And so our, our friends over at CBSA are sitting over there, Phil and Ryan and Alyssa. I don't know if they'll turn around or not, but uh, can you talk to uh, the listeners a little bit about when you join CBUSA and kind of how that's helped uh, from an operational standpoint, but also from a, you know, just raw dollar amount. Sure. Yeah. So I, we joined CBUSA in 2019. It was actually after the 2019 IBS, I saw Bill Smithers at the booth here and um, got got plugged in right away with, with Phil and then Jimmy. And um, it, it has been awesome. Um, just the, the collaboration of our group in Atlanta and Charleston to share experience. So first and foremost, I mean, yes, it is a, a group buying, but the, the collaboration and um, just relationship that's there is probably first and foremost. So it, it's given us access to national contracts, to uh, a kind of a head, a leg up on local negotiations. So while I've got a ton of hats that I wear and, and what I do today to day, it takes some of that pressure off for me to have to go negotiate a deal because it's already been negotiated. One of the benefits too of CBSA that you're, you're touching on is also like kind of seeing how other builders run their process. That's so right. You talk about using Builder Trend, and that's a tool to enable your business and be able to do the things you want to do. But then there's just construction processes, even independent of the software. And so, you know, I think for any builder who, and I talk to builders all the time who feel like, I don't, I can't talk to another builder. I, I feel disconnected. Like these types of 
group purchasing organizations have other benefits that kind of help you learn, you know, other people's perspective on how they run their businesses. And you just never know what's going to like be the thing that changes how you do things that helps you save, in this case, you know, That's thousands right. of dollars over the course of the lifetime of the year, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, we actually about, I don't know, four months ago, got a group, I think it was eight builders uh, from our CBUSA group got together and just roundtabled how we're using the, the purchase order and accounting side of, yeah. of Builder Trend. And we made up a list of what we needed, and that's why I went to Andrew and said, "Hey, here, here's some stuff there where we we do use it, and maybe some little tweaks." And that was, it was, you know, hit it off well with them and well received. Yeah, I do have a, a kind of a this is a curveball question, but we have a lot of customers here talking about yeah. like we talk to customers about the product and their process, and like people get stuck, they get they get kind of hung up on the details. When you were adopting Builder Trend, you were getting. The software, you know, up and running. And, you know, what was your game plan to like roll that out to your team? Did you have a lot of resistance internally? Um, you know, how did you get people to really, you know, buy into, you know, adapting your process? That's reality. It's a software. You That's have right. to kind of, you know, make concessions to make it work. But ultimately, like the end result is consistency and scalability, and being able to take on more work and more money ultimately. So, like, what was your kind of implementation like? A, a lot of it's just um, education yeah. and repetition in, in the immersion of it saying here's what we're going to do we believe this is the best product and process for us and then you share it with the different teams that are going to utilize the different features um, and then just follow up you continue to support them and show them how to use the products we support our building team our purchasing team design team and so on and it's something where if i need builder trends support help we'll get them on to do a call with our with the you know building team or whatever to go through stuff um, and then personally, I'll create, you know, screen like get the app because a lot of our building guys are on the app. I'll do screenshots and then put little red arrows. So <laughs> click here, click this, and yeah, because yeah, some of the maybe the initial concern is that it it's it's imposing or you know it's scary because there's so many options with it. But when you look at the functionality of what you need to do and know where to go with it, it's it's really pretty simple to use. I think we need to get Steven over at one of our uh, yeah. our training booths over there. Like, if you got a couple hours free, we can. I'm sure we can pay you by the hour to yeah. do some hey. trainings for. Yeah, but we'll for get, get, get a couple like right. spiff little lead yeah. action. You know, I need some extra gambling money. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right, Las Vegas baby. That's right. There you go. Actually, for current customers, uh, if you are a current customer at Builder Trend and listening to this, you can go over and get a little scratch off ticket. We made uh, custom Builder yeah. Trend scratch off tickets, chance to win money. Yeah. Uh, so before you leave, remind me, we'll go no, over and grab good. one of those. Um, something that you mentioned about uh, with CBUSA was just how much you can lean on them for advice and, and learning from each other and kind of rising up uh, as one organization within a, a certain uh, area. The past couple of years, I'm sure you've had to lean on that. You said you signed up in 2019, so talk about perfect timing as far as COVID hitting and, and material shortages and labor shortages and, and things like that. What are Can you give some of some examples of maybe some things that you've struggled with that you were able to bounce off of and learn from people? and and maybe some things that you're excited about now. Hopefully, we're kind of over the hump and heading into 23. Sure. So, I, I think the just the perspective around a, a buying group is kind of balancing or walking the line of the existing relationships you have with trades, and then going to new based on a committed buy. Like, if as a group we decide we're to go to a, a different supplier for something, and we've been working with this other supplier, uh, walking the line of and, and the awareness and I guess learning the impact of that and the importance of that has been really great for me to just kind of open my eyes to that that side of it. The past couple of years has just been crazy. I mean, I feel like 2021 and 22 have all had their unique challenges. And like you'd mentioned earlier, just getting the experience from other builders of, of how they're tackling labor shortages or ordering ahead because supply chain is so out of control has been just really impactful to what we do day to day. Yeah, I mean, you know, we hear a lot of the news about the macroeconomic environment. You know, I would love to hear kind of, you know, what you guys are anticipating for your, uh, you know, forecasting of business. Are you seeing any sort of trends in your job starts? And we had Mark Bowd on the podcast yeah. a couple of weeks ago, and he had a, a pretty positive read. And, you know, the jobs reports just came out um, from the Department of Labor just a couple of days ago. And, you know, the, econom the economy grew 2.3%. Like, right. construction is a big part of that uh, overall macroeconomic results. So, you know, how, how are things in, in the Atlanta market? So, I, I mean, the Atlanta market has been relatively insulated. Yeah. I mean, we definitely have seen a slowdown on some of the more attainable homes or affordable homes. And 
with, with the market that we're building, there's been pretty consistent flow. I mean, traffic has come down some, but there's still, inventory is still way low. Uh, new starts are, are down. So we're not backfilling the need that's there. So from our perspective, uh, we, we see it to continue on. I mean, I think we all need to breathe a little bit after the last three years of the building industry. So it, it's a good time to do that. Um, so I, we're expecting maybe some plateau this year, but at, at the worst, just plateau and not much dip. Well, this is uh, one of the rare, rare opportunities where my data science career and my podcast career overlap. Yeah, right. Can you feel uh, how excited he's getting? Yeah, right. like whenever this pops up, he's like, right all right, here. where's my Tableau report? Yeah, I, I'm actually, as soon as I get down here, I'll go work on it. Uh, so we did a macroeconomic, Builder Trend as a whole did a macroeconomic report. We have some stats up top that we're going to share, but we'll also link the entire report in the show notes. So if people are listening to this, uh, they can go out and check that out. But basically what they do is they interview Builder Trend customers and non-Builder Trend customers, ask them the same answers and, and see where the, the results lie. And actually kind of across the board here, uh, so do you have more or less work than you can handle? Are you understaffed versus overstaffed versus perfect? Uh, are you seeing increased profits? You see Builder Trend users come in at higher percentages. And I think that just kind of goes to point to what you were talking about earlier is establish your processes, get things standardized, know what's coming in the door, know what's going out the door. And then even if you're seeing some of the same issues, you feel more comfortable about it because you have everything written down. You're not going through emails, you're not going through Excel, you're not trying to figure it out. So like I said, we'll link that macro report um, in the show notes, but really, really interesting stuff. And I think just kind of points to why you need uh, an all, all in one solution and why you need to sign up for a company like Builder Trend. <laughs> nice. Thanks. That was my sales pitch right there. there. I'll be yeah, over here signing up people. Away. Get this box. guy on demos yeah. right now, immediately. <laughs> you know, kind of getting back to some of your perspective on things, you know, we're touching on the economic environment. You know, you talk about IBS, you mentioned, you know, having some of your employees go and like talk about how to deal with clients and all those things. Like, what are some of the things that you've learned over your years that mistakes that maybe you could kind of give some advice to builders who are kind of looking for someone that has been there, done that, has kind of seen everything, had every level of employment positions at, in construction. You know, what would you tell a builder, kind of the number one priority that could help optimize your business? Sure. Um, I, I'd go with know your strengths and, and work to those. So in one part of my history I didn't go through is I owned my own company for six years, 2009 to 15. And probably the biggest lesson I learned from that is trying to do too much myself rather than delegating out. And, and I get it, when you start a company, you have to do a lot, but probably where a lot of young businesses fail is the, the entrepreneurs and the owners try to take on too much and then overextend themselves. So I, I would just encourage, the, lean on the teams around you. Get, you know, I was in a session yesterday, talked a lot about getting a mentor and a coach. And uh, yeah, I can't stress the importance of that enough is lean on those around you to help you grow what's there. Don't try to do it all on your own. And then maybe kind of specifically, just because we were talking about this beforehand, in the kind of uh, net zero world, uh, maybe for people looking to get into that industry or just curious more about it, what are some of the things that are kind of on the, the cutting edge um, that you guys are excited about to start implementing that other people here, you know, there'll be educational sessions, there'll be booths set up. Sure. I think getting out that now will give them an opportunity to kind of explore on their own a bit. Now I'm getting excited. You're going yeah, to model yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, Net Zero Energy is really, really where my passion lies with uh, with how we're building and where I see the industry going. I mean, we're in the Southeast, so Atlanta and, and the Southeast is slower to adopt, but uh, great things with, they're simple to do. They're, they're simple little changes that we can make with our building practices that are hugely impactful. Um, your building envelope, your, your insulation, your air seal, uh, the, the little steps you're doing that if you're just building the code, you're not quite there, but it doesn't take much to get up to the point where you need. And when net zero energy, you, you could just, you know, you could put a hundred solar panels on any house or whatever and be like, all right, it's net zero. But the whole thought is, let's take the generation side out. What do we need to do, do to build the energy efficiency of the house to bring down the energy need that's there by building a better house, by building a tighter envelope, um, by being smarter and utilizing the, the, the new technology that's out there in construction. And then the solar panels are like, that's the, the icing on the cake. That's just the last bit that we need to get the HERS score down from you know 43 to that zero. 
And tell Zach a little bit about, uh, just because I was fascinated by yep. this when you were telling him, uh, the concept of microgrids um, in some of the, the residential areas that you're, you're looking to establish those in the next couple of years. Sure, sure. So, yeah, microgrids are really new on the residential side. There's a, a few on the commercial. I think there's, there's only two that I'm aware of, residential side on the southeast. But you, you look at, at the main grid, it's really taxed you lose essentially 40% of your energy when it comes from where it's generated through the transmission lines to your neighborhood. So let's say we take a 50 home development, we put solar, we, we put storage in that community, we create a microgrid. Those homes are sharing the energy that's on each other's homes, you know, the rooftops and the batteries that are there. Maybe you have a battery pack in addition to, to, to create some, some surplus, then you can still connect to the grid. So you're collaborating with the grid, but it's standalone. So if there's power outage, that neighborhood is, you know, you're free and clear. You're, yeah. you're, you're staying powered. And then you can sell some surplus back. That's incredible. I mean, there's there's a lot of emerging amazing stuff happening in construction that, you know, it just blows my mind every day of just getting a chance to talk to people who are thinking about kind of the sustainable, the long term. We're always going to need houses. Yep. We're always going to need shelter for people to live in. Yep. Uh, but we can do it in a more responsible way. That's, that's, that's right. incredible. That's right. Well, we're probably up against time here, Stephen, and this was a great conversation. We really awesome. appreciate you. you sharing us. Normally, we you know do the outro. We're gonna do it live here, Charlie. Yeah. All right. Uh, you're always welcome back on the Building Code. Thank as you. As always, it was fantastic getting a chat with you, yes. Charlie. What uh, what was your your takeaways here today? Um, I mean, this is all just a dream to me still. Yeah, the fact that right. I'm here in Vegas at Excellent. IBS. That's right. Uh, no, it was awesome. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised because Steve and I talked for a good you know half an hour before this I was like oh we're gonna run out of content but you uh, you got in your bag and brought out even more once we started to go here uh, fascinating stuff and I I think the thing that I'm most excited about is that there's builders like you out there that want to be on the cutting edge you uh, you made a commitment to 2025 to be net zero in an industry that you know is predominantly I wouldn't say I, I'd say they're more conservative right they know how to build a house it works they make money doing it why change, right? And then there's builders like you and a lot of people in the crowd. I know IBS is actually home to a lot of people that are looking to improve their businesses and grow and learn new things. Uh, and so it's just refreshing to hear and it gives me a lot of faith in the industry and, and where it's heading in general. So I'd say for our first, uh, first ever IBS recording of the podcast, this was fantastic. Uh, and you were a great guest to have on. So really, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. This has been great. I guess uh, we'll tune out. Uh, this is another episode of The Building Code. I'm Charlie Bertwistle. I'm Zach Watovich. And we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for exclusive content brought to you by Builder Trend.